every Herald of Galactus explored in detail. Hi, this is Simon Camlish and welcome to another Marvelous Videos. Galactus is one of the strongest individuals in the Marvel Universe. Originally named Galen, this godlike being is the oldest entity present in reality. He has survived events like the Big Crunch of his previous universe, which is another term for the utter destruction and the Big Bang of this universe, which is the birth. Living for so long does come with a price though, which is the insatiable hunger that comes with his existence. Not just ordinary hunger, the hunger that requires the consumption of the life energy of planets. The destruction of these worlds was getting tiresome for Galactus, so he realized that it would be exponentially more efficient if he employed the services of scouts. These scouts were termed heralds, and their job was to seek out planets for enough life energy for him to consume. This is how the group known as Heralds of Galactus came into being. Galactus produced a series of heralds in the years that followed, each with a very distinct history, purpose, and personality. Let us now jump straight in and explore each and every member of the Heralds of Galactus. But before we go into our explanation, we do have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Silver Surfer, undoubtedly the most popular herald of Galactus to date. The Silver Surfer is arguably the strongest to ever do it. Even though this is not a tiered list, the Silver Surfer deserves to be the top mention due to his accolades and iconic presence in the Marvel Universe. Formerly going by the name Norin Rad from the planet of Zendla, the Silver Surfer treasures freedom above all else and has notable sacrifices under his belt for the greater good. Rad became the second herald of Galactus when Zenla, a utopian society, was being attacked by alien spaceships and was unable to fight for themselves due to their neglected defense systems. Galactus had learned from his mistakes concerning the Fallen One and was hesitant to create a new herald. But when Rad confronted the World Devourer in hopes of dealing with the Devil who was planning to consume his home planet, Galactus could not refrain from bestowing upon Rad the duties of becoming his new herald. So came to be the existence of Silver Surf as Norin Rad is imbued with the power cosmic, with duties to fulfill in order to satiate Galactus's hunger. Keeping his word, Galactus spared Zenla and transformed Rad into the silver skinned super being, with a surfboard as his iconic weapon and mode of transportation. With his morals intact, the Silver Surfer served Galactus graciously and offered uninhabited worlds that were energy rich for him to devour. Eventually, as the Surfer ran out of worlds with no inhabitants, inhabitants, Galactus fed on a world that had sentient life within it. This ordeal drove Rad insane, as he could not come to terms with ending the life of a whole planet. Seeing this, Galactus transformed his herald once again, submerging his subconscious deep down and repressing his past memories, so that he could lead Galactus to inhibited worlds without a shred of regret. Eventually, the surfer reached Earth as Galacticus's new targeted planet. There he met Alicia Masters, who was able to sense Rad's noble and courageous presence inside the seemingly emotionless surfer. Rad was moved by Alicia and soon defected against his master in a rebellion alongside the Fantastic Four and Uatu. Their purpose was to drive Galactus away from Earth, and they were successful in doing so. But Galactus punished the surfer for his betrayal by banishing him on Earth, not allowing him to roam the universe and marvel at the wonders that it possessed. Galactus would later reconsider his decision, but the surfer would not falter in any of his former master's efforts to regain his allegiance. Thereafter, Galactus sought a new herald, giving up on the Silver Surfer. Thor. Thor became the All-Father after the War of the Realms. He was soon greeted by a near-death Galactus who came crashing into Asgard. The World Devourer was nearly dead and was mumbling about the Black Winter. Thor contacted Silver Surfer, who explained that the Black Winter was something that would destroy Galactus' original reality, effectively ending it. But Surfer informed Thor that he had found five planets that, when devoured, would provide Galactus with enough power to survive through the Black Winter. Following this, Galactus chose Thor to be his new herald. As king, or father, and herald, Thor would allow Galactus to consume a planet only after they successfully escorted the inhabitants of the planet to safety. Thor's plan was working perfectly, and at that rate, he would be able to help Galactus survive whilst losing no lives in the whole ordeal. But when they reached the fifth planet, the Black Winter caught up to them, and Galactus swiftly devoured the world in order to prepare himself for the following battle. The winter took the shape of an imposter. Thor, surrounded by dark energy. Dark Thor then 
Gawain revealed that he had not come to end reality, but only his former herald, Galen of Tar, whom he employed to collect energies from various planets. Enraged, the real Thor assimilated all the power Galactus had collected from those special planets and used it to kill him by using Mjolnir. Thor then used Galactus' energy to try and defeat Black Winter as well. Superman. In a crossover reality between Marvel and DC, Galactus consumes the planet of Krypton and through his machinations attempts to make Superman his new herald. Galactus plans to come to fruition when through the use of a mysterious orb he is able to entrap Superman with an abundance of power cosmic. Even though Superman attempts to fight off the influence, the power cosmic soon consumes him and he becomes a herald of Galactus. With his own unfathomable amounts of power combined with the unknown reaches of the power cosmic, Superman became the strongest herald of Galactus, which is canonically still Silver Surfer. With his morality and sense of self now overridden as per Galactica's wishes, Superman was sent to roam the universe in search of planets, with a plentitude of energy for his master to devour. Although the mind-controlled Superman would serve his new lord diligently with his offerings, when it came to presenting Galactus with a world to consume, the real emotions of Superman attempted to surface. He started reminiscing about old times and how Krypton was destroyed. This sudden burst of emotions allowed Superman to will himself out of his entrapment and stop Galactus from consuming the planet. Superman used the power cosmic and his own abilities after regaining his sense of self-awareness to defeat Galactus. Fighting back, Galactus strikes Superman down and strips him of the power cosmic. But reunited with the Fantastic Four and Cyborg Superman, the real Superman was able to help them reverse the polarity of Galactus' elemental converter, which made it drain power from him and not the planet. Now, with the upper hand, Superman was able to come to terms with Galactus and convince him to only devour planets without sentient life. With Galactus defeated, Cyborg Superman attempted to betray the Four and Superman, but was defeated by Galactus after he got to know that it was Henshaw's devious interference that set up this conflict in the first place. More. After Nova, Galactus was in search of an individual that lacked compassion and morals, but displayed qualities of being loyal. He realized that only a person with these attributes would continue to feed him the inhabited worlds, but would not betray him. Eventually, Galactus found the exact type of person he was looking for. While he was devouring an unnamed planet, an inhabitant named Morg was not concerned at all about his planet. Seeing this, Galactus offered his savage court executioner the position of his herald. Morg happily accepted, as he saw his homeworld being eaten. He was then imbued with the power cosmic, but increased his powers further by diving into the well of life. This effectively makes him the most powerful herald yet, apart from Silver Surfer, because, well, plot armor. Seeing how ruthless Morg was and how it would result in the loss of billions of lives, Silver Surfer, Fire Lord, and Nova joined forces and realized that the threat at hand. They even revived the Automatron Airwalker to fight for his cause against their herald successor. In the battle that followed, Nova was killed by Morg, but the rest were able to defeat and end Morg's life. After her death, the surfer flew Nova's body into the sun. Fire Lord and Airwalker then served Galactus as paired heralds and found uninhabited worlds for him to consume. But during this time, Galactus covertly revived Morg and altered his characteristics. Morg was then kidnapped by Galactus's old nemesis, Tyrant. To finally form a truce between long-term enemies, Galactus offered Tyrant to keep Morg. But Morg Morg eventually escaped and returned to Galactus. He even attempted to kill his replacements, who were saved by the silver. Eventually, Tyrant attacked Galactus one more time, but in a final act of showcasing his loyalty to Galactus, Morg attacked Tyrant with the ultimate nullifier, resulting in the deaths of both Tyrant and Morg. Meanwhile, Galactus saved himself from the ultimate nullifier by escaping into another dimension. Oh, what, you too good to talk to us? <laughs> She-Hulk. She-Hulk was the result of a blood transfusion between her cousin Bruce Banner and Jennifer Walters. This transfusion caused Jennifer to turn into the gamma-powered superhero known as She-Hulk. In a storyline featured in the animated series Hulk and the Agents of Smash, Galactus sets his sights on Earth and makes his eventual arrival felt in the city of Los Angeles in the state of California by sending Terax, his herald, as a messenger. Not too keen on letting someone devour their planet, the team of superheroes fight off the herald with a battle 
at hand, She-Hulk steps up to the plate and defeats Terex, the Tamer, in quite an impressive fashion. Rightfully so, Galactus is also impressed by She-Hulk's display of power, and he chooses to immediately swap the power cosmic from Terex into She-Hulk, imbuing her with the power cosmic established at Galactus had made his new Herald. As his Herald, She-Hulk donned the moniker of Emerald Empress. With one of their essential members defecting against her will, the agents of Smash struggled in their fight against Galactus to stop him from devouring Earth. Although they are technically successful in doing so, it only came after She-Hulk faked being hurt in her battle against Terex. She-Hulk deception did not go unnoticed by Galactus, and he was enraged at this act. He soon reverted She-Hulk back to her original state and bestowed the powers to Terex once more. Terex then takes Galactus to an uninhabited planet for him to consume so that he would leave Earth alone as part of a deal he struck with She-Hulk. Iron Man. In the storyline of the animated series Avengers Assemble, episode named Guardians and Space Knights, Iron Man offers himself as a new herald to Galactus in hopes of saving the Earth from his wrath. It starts when Galactus reaches Earth and plans on devouring it. Iron Man is able to persuade the world devourer to have a conversation with him, which results in both of them teleporting away. In reality, Iron Man had led Galactus to another planet so that he would not attempt to eat Earth. Following this, the Avengers would track Iron Man and reach a planet where Dibari lived. They soon learn that the Guardians of the Galaxy are now protectors of the planet. Upon arrival, the Avengers noted how the planet's inhabitants were in the process of abandoning their homes to get into multiple spaceships to escape the world devouring from eating them. This came after Iron Man, who was now imbued with the power cosmic, came to inform the planet dwellers that Galactus had decided to devour their planet. To make things right, the Avengers worked alongside the members of the Guardians of the Galaxy and ensured that he would not consume Earth. It subsequently transpires that the planet Galactus was devouring and was already destabilizing before his arrival. While Galactus struggled with his attempt to stop the process, Herald Iron Man idly stood by as he watched it happen and he said Galactus must feed. With the planet exploding, Galactus was knocked out cold and the Dabari were able to settle on another planet, saving their civilization. Eventually, back on Earth, Iron Man would also return back to normal. Fire Lord, formerly known as Pyreus Krill. Fire Lord was an officer aboard the exploration vessel led by Gabriel Lan aka the Air Walker. Krill was present during the attacks and subsequent abduction of his friend Lan by an alien spaceship that belonged to Galactus. Witnessing this, Krill was determined to save and retrieve his captain from whoever was to blame. Taking command of the exploration vessel, Krill followed Galactus's spacecraft across the known universe. Years passed with Krill's unsuccessful attempts at locating his friend, but this did not result in him giving up on his quest. Eventually, Krill was able to locate Galactus's ship, and he proceeded proceeded to teleport himself inside, ready to face whoever was inside it. Unbeknownst to him, Lan had already perished in a battle against the Ovoids. Krill confronted Galactus, demanding the freedom of his captain. Amazed by the courage he displayed, Galactus gave his word to Krill that he would inform him of Lan's fate, if he offered to become his new herald. Accepting this bargain, Krill was imbued with the power cosmic and became Fire Lord. Galactus informed him of Airwalker's death and his abandonment of the automation on Earth, but he immediately messed with Fire Lord's mind by concealing this very information deep down for him to basically forget it. Following this, Fire Lord served Galacticus, but his servitude was rather short. On a mission to Earth, Fire Lord was confronted by Thor. Thor bargained for Fire Lord's freedom in barter with Galactus in exchange for the destroyer armor. Now, Fire Lord regained his freedom with the power cosmic still under his control. Eventually, Fire Lord was able to locate Airwalker's automation body on Earth after Thor's fight with him. He took possession of his former captain's body and buried him on an asteroid near their homeworld of Xandar. Stardust, post reverting back to being Galactus after the Fantastic Four had successfully depowered the World Eater to become Galen, he was again in need of a new herald. This time, he chose an individual named Stardust, whose origins are shrouded in mystery. Stardust claimed that he was already pretty powerful before being imbued with the power cosmic. Stardust was the perfect herald for Galactus. He was like no other as he worshipped his master like his god and sought nothing else above his praise and peace. His ways of being such a fanatic, 
were not only contained in fulfilling his duties, but he went to the extra mile. He would locate and kill any survivors of the worlds that Galactus would devour to ensure that there was no trace of those civilizations left alive. Eventually, Stardust confronted Better Ray Bill, the protector of the remaining Corbinite race. During their battles, Stardust attempted to open a dimensional gateway and planned on making it consume Better Ray and the rest of the Corbinites. Unfortunately, Stardust made some massive errors, and it resulted in the release of the demonic entity from a cosmic hell known as Astaroth. Astaroth was not only a threat to them, but the whole universe. Understanding this, Better Ray and Stardust teamed up against her. During this time, Galactus resurrected Alpha Ray and ordered him to locate and help Stardust and Better Ray. Stardust created a massive black hole to try and capture Astaroth within it. With the arrival of Alpha Ray, the three were able to drive Astaroth back into the rift. But this resulted in both Alpha Ray and Stardust being stuck in the black hole. Eventually, Stardust found his way out and continued to serve his godlike master. Dazzler. Up until Terex was reckoned for his actions by Galactus, Dazzler had a similar past in comparison to her counterpart from the Prime Reality. Terex was sent to the black hole to suffer perpetually when Galactus decided not to spare him for his betrayal and deceitful ways. In order to spare the planet Earth from his hunger, Galactus appointed Dazzler as his new herald after she offered his services in exchange for her, for her homeworld safety. Over the years, Dazzler purposefully led her master to world devoid of sentient life. She was able to accomplish this quite well and she would find uninhabited worlds with an abundance of energy quite often for her master, which pleased him. She even succeeded in something thought to be impossible, bringing back Galactus's tenderness or sentimentality. This serviced when the world devourer quietly denied consuming the sentient plant-populated planet when he realized that Dazzler had unintentionally called him upon it. Galactus even reacted vengefully and destroyed a fleet of attackers when a group of aliens, whose worlds he had consumed, used Terax's axe to create a cosmic weapon that damaged Dazzler dangerously close to death, which showcased how fond he had grown of his herald. Following this, Dazzler refuses to continue helping Galactus once she is healed. Accepting her decision, Galactus lets her go and gives her freedom. But when she returned to Earth, she discovered that some cataseismic conflict had long since destroyed her home planet. After all this time, she chose to go back to Galactus, since she had nowhere else else to go. Nova. Frankie Ray, the adopted daughter of William Ray, had similar powers to that of Johnny Storm. Maybe due to her powers, Frankie was drawn to Johnny. They got into a relationship together and fought alongside each other in the Fantastic Four. But Frankie dreamt of bigger things, and her wish to pursue the feeling of experienced cosmic grandeur was fulfilled by the arrival of Galactus on Earth. Even though Galactus had given his word that he would spare Earth, he was reluctantly attempting to devour the planet due to him becoming weak and feeling as if there was no other option. Frankie Frankie tried to bargain with the World Devourer and offered him her services in exchange for sparing the planet, since this meant that Galactus would not only keep his word but also gain the loyal herald that he was seeking. He happily agreed to her terms. Even after Reed warned Ray of what her duties would entail, she was more than ready to take up the mantle. Now imbued with the power cosmic, Ray transformed into Nova. Nova performed her duties diligently and developed a strong bond with Galactus, who also grew fond of her. She believed the loss of one's inconsequential planet was not much to think about. Soon she befriended the Silver Surfer, who saw her going down the same path as himself. In hopes of changing her mind, the Surfer took her to her world and asked her if she would allow Galactus to consume it. When she said yes, he revealed to her that he showed her Earth by taking her back in time. She was stunned by this and decided to change her ways. With her compassion restored, Faye was useless to Galactus, and he replaced her with a deserving successor. Sabretooth. In an alternate universe, Sabretooth of Earth 295 was recruited by the Time Broker into the Exiles, and he helped them into fixing the multiverse after it was heavily disturbed by subsequent actions of the ignorant. On one such mission, the Exiles found themselves on Earth 552. This reality was a weirdly twisted one. Here, Galactus was the benevolent protector of the universe, while his former herald, Silver Surfer, was the one terrorizing the whole living life of the universe. The Silver Surfer would constantly 
constantly use his power cosmic against Galactus, and in one instance, the battle had left Galactus heavily wounded and utterly defeated. Tasked with the protecting of the injured Galactus, the exiles were now facing the might of their villainous Silver Surfer. In the battle that followed, the group was sure to face a terrible fate at the hands of this reality Silver Surfer, until Sabretooth got an amazing idea. He reached out to Galactus and convinced him to bestow upon him the power cosmic. Sabretooth assured Galactus that he would use the powers for good and promptly defeat the outraging Silver Surfer. Following up on his promise, Sabretooth is able to defeat the Silver Surfer using his newly gained powers alongside the Exiles. Only planning to be a wielder of the power cosmic temporarily for the greater good, Sabretooth denied an invitation from Galactus to join him as his herald after the battle was won. Subsequently, he returned the powers he borrowed, which Galactus graciously accepted. Following this, Sabretooth remained a part of the Exiles, despite having a taste of unreal powers within his grasp. Red Shift Red Shift came to be a herald under unknown circumstances, and very little is really known about this individual. It was after Galactus had survived the ultimate nullifier by fleeing into another dimension and seeking shelter there during the events that transpired. Galactus was able to return to the universe by devouring the powers of a villain from an alternate timeline known as Hyperstorm. This whole ordeal made Galactus' hunger grow tenfold, and it drove him to levels of insanity. Now obsessed with consuming sentient life, Galactus Galactus was not planning on being without a herald for long, and with that, he recruited Red Shift during this time. With his sights set on planet Earth, Red Shift was sent by Galactus to scout the world. There, he encountered Silver Surfer, who tried his best to reason with the new herald and explain to him why Earth should be left alone. Unable to reach terms, the two would clash, and Red Shift would use his power cosmic to open a black hole in hopes of banishing the Surfer inside it and getting rid of him. Unfortunately for him, his plans did not go as he had hoped, and instead of just trapping Trapping his enemy, Redshift was sucked into the black hole alongside the Surfer. They continued battling endlessly inside the black hole until Surfer exploded with an abundance of cosmic energy in hopes of damaging his opponent. Following this, Redshift lost his trusty swords, which allowed him to open portals in the first place. Silver Surfer was able to escape the depth of the black hole with a slight margin, leaving Redshift to be stuck alone perpetually. The Invisible Boy The Invisible Boy is none other than everyone's favourite, the Human Torch, Johnny from the Fantastic Four. This came to be through a series of events and started when a federation of aliens united against a common cause of protecting worlds from the World Devourer. These aliens reached out to Earth in hopes of bestowing upon them the technology that allows them to conceal planets from the reaches of Galactus. However, they did not come without their apprehensions about Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman. They feared that she would side with Galactus and would use her powers to counter the device's effects. As the aliens were threatening to kill Sue, Reed Richards invented a device that would nullify her powers so that the aliens would not see her as a threat. In reality, Reed had switched Sue's powers with Johnny's, making him the Invisible Boy. Not long after, Galactus approached Earth and had planned to use Sue's powers to work against this federation of aliens. It did not take long for the World Eater to gain knowledge of the switch, so he decided to abduct Johnny and forcefully bestow upon him the power cosmic, making him his herald. Despite his fascination with such overwhelming powers, Johnny used diversionary tactics against Galactus. He sought uninhabited worlds for his master to devour while rallying inhabitants of other worlds against him. Johnny's strategy worked flawlessly, as it brought time for Reed and Quasar to eventually locate him. With the knowledge of power cosmic, Johnny was able to instruct Reed and Quasar to create a device that would strip Galactus of his cosmic energy. With this successful endeavor, they were able to turn Galactus back into Galen and bring him to Earth. Then the Fantastic Four were able to come to terms with Galen for him to exile himself in a dimension with an abundance of energy, saving the Earth from being consumed. The Fallen One The Fallen One is believed to be the very first herald of Galactus. This individual is part of a very vague history of the heralds created by Galactus, but his name came to be because of the fate that followed him. Unlike most heralds that followed him, the Fallen One was bestowed with the power to control black matter rather than the power cosmic by Galactus, so that he could serve him. But due to inconsistent and contentious nature of the Fallen One, Galactus soon realized that he could be compromising his overall schemes. Due to this, Galactus Galactus eventually imprisoned him for years to come. This did not keep the Fallen One at bay, as he repeatedly attempted to use his powers against the World Devourer by escaping his captivity and confronting Galactus himself. It did not bode well for him, though. 
as every time he did this, Galactus would recapture him and imprison him once more. The Fallen One was termed a galactic level threat due to him being empowered by dark energy and his ability to manipulate matter, control the electromagnetic spectrum, travel at the speed of light, and be completely immune to the rigors of space. If not for Galactus to be his nemesis, most other beings in the universe would falter against such powers. Deadpool, yep, everyone's favorite, the Merc with a Mouth, has once been a herald of Galactus. It all starts when the whole country is in recession, and everyone suffers from financial problems, even Deadpool, who is so horrendously in debt that he goes to do the unthinkable. He looks for a job. Although Deadpool was $300,000 in debt, a massive portion of it came from his questionable but justifiable purchase of a guinea pig for $25,000. Who does not love a guinea pig, eh? But for his job hunt, Deadpool contacts various villains like Dr. Dr. Doom, Red Skull, Magneto, and others. He is basically searching for someone who would allow him to be a freelance assassin for them and pay him stupendous amounts of money. After numerous failed attempts, Deadpool finally comes across an advertisement stating Herald Wanted, and the ad catches Deadpool's attention, and he thinks out loud what the word Herald means. What he misses out on is the in the ad is the part where it is written that if a reader is interested in taking the job, they just have to say the word Herald out loud. Now, face to face with the world Devourer, Deadpool, in his night suit, applies for the job with Galactus. Galactus first questions whether the applicant even knows what a herald is. To this, Deadpool replies with, not exactly. And upon Galactus's explanation of his role and responsibilities, Deadpool simply says, that's pretty gangster. Following this interesting interview, Deadpool accepts the job and is immediately imbued with the power cosmic, with Galactus ordering him to find planets for him to consume. Although Deadpool works diligently, Galactus grows to be too fed up with him because he would simply never shut up. Following a fight with the Silver Surfer, who wishes to stop his madness, Deadpool resigns from the job and later joins Heralds of Galactus Anonymous to talk about his bad experience. Terex the Tamer. After the failure to control the righteous emotions of Silver Surfer, Galactus was in search of a new herald who lacked certain qualities such as nobility, bravado, and heroism. It was because these were the qualities that led Silver Surfer to betray his master and side with the Earthlings. The World Devourer looked for someone who was cruel, hungry for power, and would have no qualms about locating worlds with inhabitants for him to consume. Eventually, Galactus found one such individual who went by the name of Tyros. He was the authoritarian dictator of the city of Lanlac on the planet Burge. Tyros was no ordinary being. He was born powerful as a mutation allowed him to animate stone. Knowing this, Galactus determined that he would need to overpower Tyros first before offering his invitation. To do this, Galactus employed all the aid of none other than the Fantastic Four. He stated that he would help them defeat the Sphinx, and in exchange, they had to subdue Tyros. The four reluctantly agreed, and Galactus soon captured Tyros. He then immediately imbued with the Tyros the power of Cosmic, and made him a herald, which resulted in him gaining the moniker, Terax the Tamer, who was powerful enough to move entire planets. As Galactus had planned, Terax was unscrupulous, and had no qualms about leading his master towards populated worlds. But yet again, Galactus' plans were not flawless. Terax one of the most essential qualities of a herald, loyalty. Terax always sought out for himself and had no allegiance to Galactus. He obeyed him out of fear but constantly claimed worlds for himself. He eventually came to Earth to gain freedom. He overtook Manhattan and threatened to destroy it unless the Fantastic Four destroyed Galactus's vessel. Galactus was furious at this betrayal and soon robbed Terax of his powers, turning him back into Tyros and abandoning him to rot. The Destroyer Armor. The Asgardian Destroyer became the new herald of Galactus following the story of Fire Lord. Galactus did not actively seek to employ the service of the Destroyer as his new herald, but it came to be when Thor urged the World Devourer to exchange Fire Lord's freedom for the Destroyer's armor. With a successful barter at hand, Thor was able to free Piraeus Krill from perpetual servitude. Now with the Destroyer as his new herald, Galactus imbued the suit of armor with the power cosmic. In reality, the armor was created by Odin to battle the likes of Celestials, which meant that it was insanely strong in the first place. Top of that, the metal used in its creation is a material superior to Uru, which is the metal that was used by the dwarves to create Thor's hammer, the Mjolnir. The destroyer was also enchanted by Odin, allowing it to possess the powers of strong individuals from Asgard, the likes of Odin and Thor, among others. Needless to say, with its capabilities alongside the power cosmic, the destroyer was one of the most powerful heralds to ever exist. But the major flaw remained that the destroyer 
destroyer was not a sentient being, unlike most of the other heralds. With no fondness for the suit of armor, Galactus thought it beyond him to stop the machinations of Loki when the latter was stealing the destroyer for himself. With no attempt to regain the destroyer from Loki, Galactus sought a new herald to take its place. Golden Oldie, none other than everyone's beloved Aunt May, has once been a herald of Galactus. This happened because she was at the wrong place at the wrong time. When Galactus was hoping to employ the services of Franklin Richards as his new herald, he attacked the young man and tried to hit him with his energy beams, which would result in him being the new herald. In self-defense, Franklin reflected those beams, but unfortunately, they landed on Aunt May. Now imbued with the power of power cosmic and her personality brainwashed, Aunt May transformed into the Golden Oldie. Given that Galactus was visibly unsure of his new herald and that he was quite hungry, Franklin handed him a packet of his favorite golden sponge cake filled with cream twinkles for him to eat. Galactus is shocked to discover that the confectionery significantly replenished him and orders the Golden Oldie to seek out more of them. Soon she gathered every single twinkle packet from all around the world to feed him, but it was still insufficient. Nevertheless, it satisfied his appetite for the time being, while she looked for another planet for him to eat. The Golden Oldie eventually discovers a planet in the depth of space that resembles a massive twinkle with its own moon and meets the planet's creator, the Doughboy. The Doughboy has been wandering the known universe while building his world for Galactus to swallow after being banished from his home world for engaging in excessive baking. The Golden Oldie then comes up with the ideal solution, having the Doughboy serve as Galactus's new herald. This idea wins everyone over, and she is discharged from duty and allowed to go home. When she returns, Franklin gets so happy to see her that he hugs her and absorbs all of her power cosmic from her body, returning Aunt May to normal. Willy Lumpkin. The not so popular Willy Lumpkin was not a being of great powers, but he did have an important role to fill. He was the male delivery man of the Fantastic Four. Only long term fans of the Fantastic Four may recognize the name, as he's not really seen much of the spotlight in recent years. Stanley's cameo as the mailman in the Fantastic Four films is one of Willy's most notable appearances. Regardless, in a what if continuity, Willy is imbued with the power cosmic and becomes a herald of Galactus. In the title, aptly named, What if? If Willie Lumpkins were to herald to Galactus. Willie takes up the mantle and serves his new master, but unfortunately for all the countable on one hand amount of fans of Willie, all he did as a herald was deliver a letter to the Fantastic Four on behalf of Galactus. So basically, he did nothing new to his already established previous job, but it was quite cool to witness him in his super-powered state regardless. Airwalker. Airwalker was formerly a member of the Nova Corps. His name was Gabriel Lan, and he was the herald following the footsteps of Silver Surfer. Lan was promised great powers and unlimited freedom to travel around the universe by Galactus. And due to him being someone who sought adventures and always wanted to explore, Gabriel accepted this offer gracefully. As the Airwalker imbued with the power cosmic, Gabriel served Galactus for years to come, faithfully at that. Their relationship came to be more than just a formal one, as Galactus had grown quite fond of him. On one fateful day, Galactus was being attacked by a fleet of Ovoid warships. Airwalker swiftly joined the battle and eventually sacrificed his life to protect his master. A weaker and hungered version of Galactus was unable to save or rejuvenate Gabriel, confirming his death. Losing a dear friend, ally, and scout was devastating for Galactus, so he attempted to merge Land's consciousness into a robotic replica of the Airwalker. Unfortunately for them, this new version of the Airwalker was all but a hollow shell of the form a man Gabriel used to be. He had lost his personality among with all the best qualities that he had before. The automaton Airwalker was then sent by Galactus to Earth in an attempt to retrieve the Silver Surfer and regain his allegiance. But Silver Surfer refused, and it resulted in the following battle against the Surfer and Fantastic Four, in which Airwalker was defeated. The World Devourer abandoned the automaton on Earth after it was badly damaged. Later, we can see the Machine Smith retrieving Airwalker's heavily vandalized robotic body. Conclusion. Each herald is tasked with finding planets for Galactus to consume, but they also play an important role in protecting their master from those who would seek to stop him. Despite their loyalty to Galactus, many heralds struggle with the moral implications of their actions and their destruction they bring to the universe. Because all of this, the heralds of Galactus are complex and fascinating characters who have played a significant role in the Marvel Comics universe, serving as both agents of destruction and protectors of the universe. With 
an ever-present character like Galactus, we can be sure that we will see new heralds come up in the foreseeable future. Till then, we hope you enjoyed our video exploring every herald of Galactus to date. And if you liked our content, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe.